Thanks so much for tuning into Real Health. Um, understanding patterns of communication may be clearing a lot of misunderstanding in relationships. So to expand on communication patterns and systems, I'm joined by Leah C4, who's a life and relationships coach. You know, sometimes people say, it feels like I'm speaking Greek and the other person is speaking Chinese and we have no translators. So this is a great topic because as humans, it all comes down to how we communicate with yeah. each other at the end of the day. You believe that there's four systems of communication. Tell us about that. So, uh, like you said, you can tell a story to these four different people yeah. and they're going to hear four different messages Ways, completely yeah. because yeah. of the way that they're interpreting what you're saying. Yeah. So, the way we communicate is not just verbally what we're saying, but has a huge amount to do with our body language mm. and how those people are perceiving and picking up on the subtle cues of what we're saying. Yeah. So, uh, through my experience, there are four different types of systems, four different types of communication. And when I say you may be in one of these systems, don't think that you're boxed in to and if one, you fall into yeah. this, that's you. Yeah. Uh, we have elements of all of them. Okay. But what we do is we default to the one that is most natural uh, for us. Okay. So, the first system that we We'll talk about is called the listener. <laughs> the listener is somebody who, as it implies, processes information by what things sound like. So the listener is someone who, when they are speaking to you, they won't maintain eye contact with you. They're not going to be um, engaged with you from a body language perspective. They're going to, uh, like I'm talking to you now, look mm. down, look away, focus their ear, and that's how they're going to process the information. Mm. So with a listener, what's important for them is how you are saying something, mm. not what you are saying. Mm. So your tone of voice or the loudness of your voice could impact them far more than the message you're trying to get across. Mm. Um, listeners are very non-tactile. They don't like to be touched. So if they're going through stress or they're in a, in a bad way, don't come and give them a hug. Don't come and stroke them. You know, they, they just need to be given their space. Okay. Um, you know, if you walk through an open plan office, uh, a listener is someone who's really going to either have the headphones on or they preferably want to sit in the desk that's right by the corner to yeah. not engage with people because yeah. the sound is what's important. So they're really good at talking things through and they love listening to what you have to say. Yeah. But um, people who love eye contact think that, that could be quite rude, rude because they never look at you when they speak. Yeah, or they're being dismissive and aloof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But what they're actually doing is processing so much more information than you could imagine just by hearing what you're saying. And culture could have a major impact Massive. if someone doesn't look at you in the eye or looks away, as you mentioned, could be absolutely um, perceived as being rude. Okay. And yeah, absolutely. Different different cultures will absolutely dictate how mm. we how our filters let us take information. Yes. In. Yeah. So it's it's all of this is context dependent mm. where you're from and what is the situation mm. happening mm. so um, so the listener is 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 very identifiable from the kind of it would seem aloofness and um, they tend to love uh, crossing their arms yeah. they often sit with their arms crossed in front of them and uh, but but very engaged it just doesn't look like they're very engaged. okay okay so that's the listener um, and out of the percentages of what we're talking here, a very small percentage of the population would be listeners. Mm. It's not a very common communication okay. type. Okay. Probably the most common communication type is the next one called the observer. Okay. So the observer is someone who, who really watches and they see and they look and they engage. Again, don't really want to be touched. They don't want to be cont in contact, but they like being up front and center. Okay. So an observer is someone who can take a huge amount of information from a visual, from uh, a I'm picture, a photograph a brochure, a yeah. website, and, and that's how they process their information. So an observer tells a story through the way something looks. Mm. Therefore, they are always, you'll always find observers in careers like graphic design, interior design, fashion design, yeah. um, photography. Visually, yeah, that's yeah, the story. Aesthetics, appealing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So their homes will always look like something out of a catalog, <laughs> you know, um, and very groomed all the time. Okay. So you can spot an observer because they are always presenting themselves in a very stylish way okay. in the world. Okay. Um, and that's how they present. So observers are um, can seem to be quite confrontational in that their body language is very... Hey, hey, hey I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very much eye contact. Okay. They will really, they can kind of stare you down a bit when they're talking to you. And they, they always want to be in the, in, in the middle, or sorry, in the front of everything. So um, if they go to a movie or theatre or a presentation, they want the front seat. Mm. And they want to be up front and centre. So very good in front of, uh, you know, people, very good at presenting. That's their, their kind of foray. Okay. Um, and they are... Um, you can spot their body language. They're very um, shoulders back, chin forward, mm. very confident and mm. very own their space. Mm. If you meet uh, an observer, 
they, they will usually often take a step back from you to see the whole picture, <laughs> to kind of look at what's going on. So that's the observer. You know, observers are ones who can um, buy their clothing online. Yeah. They do actually a lot of their shopping online yeah. because the picture is what they're after. Yeah. The look of, of something is what, what they're after. It's not about the comfort and it's not about the functionality of yeah. it. It's about how, how nice it looks. Okay. So, so that would be an a, um, observer. And we then the third system that we have is called the connector. So the connector is the, the touching, feeling type. It's the intuitive, okay. caring type. Their body language is one of always like shoulders yes, in, yeah. closeness, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's talk. They stand They're closer to you all Always, the time. even yeah. a stranger. Yeah. The, the connectors <laughs> are the ones who will hug you. Yeah. They always want to hug, even <laughs> if you're a stranger, because that's their grounding. It's how they, it's how they feel. So we've had the, the listener processes by hearing, and the observer processes by seeing, but the connector is how something feels. Mm. They're the ones that always follow their gut. Okay. So no matter what the logic is, yeah. they're going to go with what their yeah. heart or their gut tells them. Um, so they, they can be quite intimate and they pick up on subtleties that the other, the other systems don't. So they'll know you're not okay before you know you're not yeah. okay. Yeah. They just pick up on, you know, something's not right. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes it's not tangible. They can't explain why they know something. It's almost that okay. sixth sense that Absolutely. they have. Yeah. Absolutely. So especially in a relationship, the connectors are the ones that are going to go, are we okay? Okay. Something yeah. doesn't feel right here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and uh, and the the observer will kind of pick up on the body language of like you look like you're tense. Yeah. You look like you're upset with me. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Um, and the or you the, rolled your eyes. Yeah. You rolled your eyes. Yeah. Different. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and whereas the the listener will pick up on the the sigh or mm. the the tightness in the voice or mm. the the gaps of silence that's what will trigger the listener and the fourth <clears> the fourth <throat> type of person so the fourth type of person is the analyzer okay and the analyzer is very uh, fact orientated they're into their systems they're into their processes they're into the rules and they're into the evidence and proof of a situation okay so if you have let's say um you know, the analyzer is is a very uh, similar to the observer with their body language, quite tall, but very stiff and contained. Okay. They hold themselves and again, don't really like too much eye contact. Okay. Um, but they, they really do take in, they, they process a lot of information. Yeah, yeah. So in a career situation, the analyzers are the ones who are your computer programmers, your engineers, your accountants, your bankers, fields of professions that are quantifiable, that there's no gray area, yeah. everything is black yeah, and white yeah, yeah. provable. Yeah. That's where you'll find your analyzer. So obviously you can see where conflict can arise. <laughs> Huge conflict, you know. You let, know he, let's say we have an analyzer and a connector in yeah, a relationship. Yeah. And the connector will say, you know, I just don't feel loved by you yes. at the moment. I just feel like you're being so distant to me. Yeah. And the analyzer is, well, what am I doing? Yeah. And explain it to me. Yeah. And I don't, but I made you coffee this morning. Yeah. That's loving you. I don't yeah. understand what you mean. Yeah. And they, you need to describe to an analyzer the, the, the reasons you feel something. You need to say to the analyzer, here's the bullet points. Yeah. Here's the bottom line of why yeah. I'm feeling this way. And here's more points of what you need to do to change the situation. Versus the connector who'll be like, well, let's just feel it as we go along. Yeah. Let's just suss it out and let's just kind of go with the flow. It's like the worst thing you can say to yeah. an analyzer. Yeah. Let's just go with the, the flow, flow and trust yeah. the process. Yeah. They don't know what that means. No, no, tell me what the process yeah. is. Um, with, with listeners, uh, if you've got a listener and an observer in a relationship, the observer will always feel disrespected if the listener doesn't look at them when they're speaking to yes. them. Yeah. Now, why can't you look at me when I talk yeah. to you? <laughs> <laughs> and the listener's like, no, I'm really concentrating. But if I have to watch you and listen. Yeah, it's too much for me. It's too much yeah. input. Mm. And I can't really take in what you're saying mm. to me. Mm. So you can really spot the, the listeners because eye contact's uncomfortable. They, they, they shift their eye contact away a lot and they stutter with their speech quite a bit. Yeah. So it's really okay to say to them, you don't have to look at me when we speak. Okay. I know you're listening to me. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So um, so is it is it you know incumbent upon you to sort of figure out your communication style and then also try and see what, you know, the communication patterns and styles are of other people in order to avoid those stressful, tense situations as well. Absolutely. You know, often it's who's the most mature person to make that first step um, in a relationship, a romantic relationship, a marriage, for example, when someone says, well, you know that I'm that way. Why do you continue to sort of push my buttons? You know, yeah. how, how do you, you know, advise people to start communicating better once they understand these different ways of communicating? Well, absolutely. First, know your system. 
And this is definitely one of the first things I will do with a couple is understanding what is your system. Because if you can explain to the partner that you're with and say, okay, when you speak to me, yeah. I need you to sit next to me on the couch. Yeah. I need you to hold my hand. I don't need you to advise me or correct me yes. if you're an analyzer. I just need you to hear my story yeah. and just empathize with what I'm going through. Yeah. Um, whereas if you know, you're speaking to an analyzer and you need to get a point across to them Remember, they don't want to be touched. They don't want to be hugged. They don't want to hold your hand. Mm. They just need you to come with the bullet points of what is not working for me in the relationship mm. right now. This is what you are saying, and this is what you are doing that is not okay, mm. and this is what I think you could do instead. Mm. So even though as a connector it may not be your natural way of speaking, it has to become a lesson you learn to, to get the message across to someone who has to hear, hear it. I hear you. Is, this, is so, this part personality, part life and mm. learning from our parents and learning from, again, social situations and culture, mm. you know, and so could a, an analyzer say, actually, no, I've been taught to be an analyzer, but I think I'm not an analyzer. I actually yes. want to be a connector, yes. you know. And funny you say that because out of the four systems, the analyzer is the one that is, is most out of a sense of defense mechanism when you're growing up in a home or in an environment at school where your creativity is suppressed, yes. where I'm not interested in what you have to say, children are there to be seen and not heard, yeah. you know, or laughed at or bullied around yeah. something that was creative. It, it, it pushes people or kids into, into an area, area of, well, if I, if I can just prove, and if I can just stay with the facts, then no one can tease me about it. Mm. And if it's, if, it's, if it's provable, then no one's gonna question me. Mm. Um, so in a way, the analyzer is quite a defensive mm. mechanism that becomes living in the intellect all the time, mm. because then I, then I can just prove everything all the time, and it's a safe place to be. Awesome, well, lots of food for thought. As you mentioned, all of us can sort of move between the four, but it's about realizing, figuring out what your, you know, your dominant way of communicating yes. is. Thanks so much for joining us. And studio. Yeah, it's great to have you back with us.